Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Spouse with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. I've got a lot of plants on my list that I need to repot. So I thought it might be a fun opportunity to do like a little Q&A with you guys. So I requested some questions a while ago, like a long time ago on my YouTube community tab. And I also requested questions on Instagram. So if you guys ever wanna ask a question of me in the future, just keep an eye out on those spots. That's kind of generally where I field for questions. I might take a pause to talk about each plant as we go, maybe. I'm gonna be trying some new things today, actually. So it's kind of exciting, but also terrifying. But I'm gonna try to like keep my head on straight and be able to focus on the task at hand and also answer the questions. You know, there's gonna be a lot, but I'm gonna do my best and I'm gonna do as much as I can. I do have a time limit I've set for myself. And so I'll just kind of get done what I can get done today. And then in the future, I mean, if I have a lot left over, there will always be opportunity for more repotting, more Q and A's in the future. So that being said, if I don't get to your question, I'm very sorry, but I'm just gonna try to answer what I can. I'm gonna um, assemble some moss poles while I answer the first few questions. By the way, these questions are a mixture of planty and personal questions. So the first question, what do I want to answer first? What plant do you have the most of? It's an interesting question. I guess you could kind of take this on, on a few different angles. You could interpret this as a specific species or like, you know, a, a very specific plant that I have like multiple of, or you could, I suppose, uh, interpret it as which genus do you have the most of or kind of plants that are similar to each other i haven't done a formal count on my different genera i guess plants i have duplicate of i try to not keep duplicate plants in my collection at least not for long sometimes i do wind up with a lot of duplicates in my collection that i don't intend to keep long term so one example of that would be like the begonia maculata whitei for a long time i had a lot of that plant because i chopped my entire plant up but at this point in time I still have several, but I've whittled it down a lot just because I didn't want to be in a massive sea of Begonia Maculata Whitey as much as I love that plant. Yeah, I ended up giving a lot of them away, which made a lot of people happy. So I was glad about that. So for a while, I would say, yeah, it was Begonia Maculata Whitey. But in terms of plants, I just like, keep in my collection. I don't know, I feel like I have, I do have two just standard philodendron heteraceums, you know, like the heart leaf philodendron. And then if you also want to count, like take cultivars into account, I have several cultivars of that same species, which would be like philodendron Brazil, variegated, philodendron heteracean as well, and philodendron lichens, and the lemon lime one. So like right there, I have a lot of different cultivars of the same species. So yeah, philodendron heteracean maybe? I know that was kind of a convoluted way of answering such a straightforward question, but as far as like genera go, I feel like I have the most of philodendron. I feel like Hoya are definitely kind of catching up, but still not to the level that Philodendron is at in my collection. Hopefully that answers your question sufficiently. All right, I'm already getting thirsty. This is my Monstera Adansonii Variegata. I think I'm gonna put this guy in a moss pole, but which one do I want to put it on? Maybe this one? I mean, they're all very similar. This I got pretty recently. This is like the original potting mix it was in. I did add some sphagnum moss to it just to prop it up because it was already starting to like want to climb and go up this way. So I just stuck sphagnum moss there because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take for me to get to it, but there's already a bit of browning on it. So right there and right there. So I really don't want there to be browning on this plant. I know that's a really common issue. And then yeah, some of the white melted off on this newest leaf that emerged for me. So I want to like not have that problem. Let me know if you know exactly what contributes to browning. Cause I just, I mean, I know that if, if it's white, it's just variegated portions, especially if it's sectoral like this it's it's gonna be prone to browning and crisping just because it's not contributing to the plant but i want to mitigate that as much as possible i don't know i did stick it in my greenhouse cabin and i think that that helped a little bit like i feel like the browning stopped progressing in the same way that it was so maybe it just wants to be in high humidity really ideal conditions but we'll have to see but yeah let's dig in and see what the roots are like i don't fully know which pot i'm gonna put this in yet so we're gonna just hope for the best. I mean, I might just put it back into this pot if the root system isn't fully developed, but just add a moss pole. Uh, that's definitely an option. But 
before I do that, oh, here, the root system. I do want to refresh the soil because this is straight peat, basically. So, oh, this is a cool one. Did you experience plant burnout when you were freshly postpartum and how did you overcome? So interestingly, I'm trying to remember. I, honestly, that period of time is such a blur. I think with my second child, because with my first child, I had plants, but not to the same degree that I do now. Like I, w I was not really collecting plants in 2020. Like I owned plants and I really liked them all throughout college, before I got married, before I had kids. But my first was born at the end of 2020 and I had maybe like 25 or 30 plants. So I was not very overwhelmed. But when I had my second child, <laughs> that was in... 2022 to end of 2022 so about two years later my collection had exponentially grown in size at that point i think i had like 125 plants and at this point for reference I, i'm hovering more around 150 pretty consistently i'm gonna go with terracotta i need moss first so me so okay what was i saying i also need soil <laughs> with my second child i experienced plant burnout less during the postpartum phase and more during pregnancy. So during postpartum, I actually felt extra invigorated to care for my plants because that was something outside of being a mom. Like it, it provided an escape for me. And don't get me wrong, I mean, I love being a mom, but if you are a mom, maybe you would understand, you know, you still really need to have an identity for yourself apart from your children. And I felt like that was really healthy for me to have a space apart from my child, apart from caring for someone else. And yes, you're caring for plants and like that can lend itself to burnout because if you're already burnt out on caring for things, yeah, you know, that might be a problem for you. But for me, it felt more like an escape and like a peaceful activity that I, that was mine, that I could do. I actually felt really reinvigorated in the postpartum period in terms of caring for my plants. And I also felt really motivated to do things in my YouTube channel because again, like that was something that I, that was my own space. It offered something different to the routine monotony of when you have a newborn, I mean, it's around the clock, all day, all night, the same, routine over and over again. And that just wasn't stimulating enough for me. And so yeah, caring for my plants helped me to have something in the midst of kind of a monotonous routine. Cause I'm, I don't know, I like to think a lot and if I'm, but at the same time, if I'm not like using my hands, I don't know. I just, I start getting stir crazy. Obviously you should not feel guilty if you do feel plant burnout in the postpartum period. Like I think that that is, an extremely normal thing to feel, especially, I mean, I don't necessarily want to say, especially if it's your first child, but at the same time, I mean, going from no kids to having a child is such a life-changing thing. Obviously, when you add more kids on top of that, it can be exhausting, but it's, it's in a different way, you know? Because with your first, like your entire system of life just shifts, but with subsequent children, it's not as extreme of a shift. So I think that in and of itself, could lead to burnout because like that is all you can handle because you're learning a completely new thing. So yeah, I don't think that you should feel guilty. But for me personally, I didn't really feel a burnout postpartum. I felt, like I said before, burnout during pregnancy because I had really, really bad morning sickness and really, really bad fatigue. I mean, pregnancy really affected my body a lot. And so during my first trimester especially and part of my second trimester like I felt so guilty I don't even know if I really have a good way to show how I cope with it I think I sort of just forced myself to do the bare minimum so I would water my plants but they would I mean they would be pretty thirsty thankfully I don't think I lost very many because I would water them but I wasn't fertilizing I wasn't repotting I really was not doing anything extra beyond just bare minimum, just watering them. And sometimes I'd also ask my husband to help me water my plants. So I'd be like, hey, I'm so sick, I can't do this, but I just noticed that this plant is curling up and I just, I need you to water this plant. So my husband would and, and he'd support me in that way. Basically, I just did the bare minimum. That's really how I coped. And then, you know, that love for plants 
did get reinvigorated again. So like there's definitely hope for that, especially if it's something that is really life giving to you in the long run, I think that you can return to it. But if you like are trying to force yourself too much, I think that that can lead to more burnout and more, it can just leave a sour taste in your mouth. And for me during that time, I just had to take a break and accept, hey, I don't have capacity to do YouTube. I don't have capacity to do plants. And like, I feel really bad and guilty about just kind of ghosting everyone and also like not being there 100% for my plants like I would like to be. But I just know that that's my capacity right now and I just accept it. And it's like, this is a season of life. I, I knew that. I, honestly, like all I could do was do my job, barely, and then come home and take care of my toddler, uh, my daughter, while I was pregnant with my second. And that that's pretty much like all I could do like I couldn't hang out with friends. I couldn't engage in any of my hobbies. Like I just knew that that was the season I was in. You know, I expect I definitely might get burnt out again if I'm pushing myself too hard. I think a lot of it is you have to just accept what season you're in. That's a big part of it because if you're if you don't, that can be kind of a dangerous. You can really get down on yourself, and that's that's kind of sad. Like don't do that. <laughs> Um, especially when you're going through such a life-changing and challenging time such as postpartum. Here is the Monstera Adansonii Veragrata. Actually looks so good. I'm actually really excited. It's already going to need, you know, a pull extension pretty soon because it's already kind of approaching the top of the pole, but it's a start, which is good. And by the way, I like to water all my plants in right after potting them up. So I'll do that at the end, but I don't know if I'm going to film it. I don't know if it's going to fit in this pot specifically, but we're going to give it a shot. This is Monstera Siltipicana. And I've got two plants here that I want to pot together. One of these was definitely a propagation of the other one. I think this was a propagation. Oh, I don't know. I feel like this plant has never done super, super well for me. The leaves tend to die off super easily, uh, which is a little bit frustrating, but I have a suspicion that there might be a root issue. I mean, look at how barren it is up top. I don't know. We're just gonna have to see, but let's just take a look at the roots first. I can even get it out of this pot. The stems are so delicate on this thing. Okay. I'm afraid I'm gonna like break them all off. Okay. Well, no wonder it was unhappy. That is very well rooted. I did water it pretty recently. So the soil is very dark, but like there's a lot of roots in there. So no wonder. Let's see. What do you like to do in your free time? So this one's a little bit more of a personal question. I'm gonna unpot this one as well. I actually might need to go grab a different pot for this. Ooh, these are well rooted, my goodness. What do I like to do in my free time? Well, I feel like I don't have a whole lot of free time these days. Yeah, just between work and taking care of my kids. I am blessed to have quite a few friends. So I would say like that is a big part of my free time. Okay, that's in here maybe. This isn't as cute of a pot as I wanted. Maybe I'll just have to use a cash bow. Well, yeah, I, I was gonna say, I am blessed to have honestly quite a few friends. And most of that is my husband's doing because he is very extroverted. And I moved to the area where my husband grew up and he happened to have a lot of friends still here in Ohio. I did not grow up in this area, but like his friends kind of became my friends and like his friends' wives largely became my friends. My best friend from childhood actually it does live in the same area. She lives down the street. So that's that's pretty fun. So yeah, I try to hang out with friends, you know, go on walks or play Dungeons and Dragons with them. If I'm not hanging out with friends, which I am more of an introvert, sometimes I am a little bit more of a homebody and I like to spend my time on my various hobbies, which include obviously house plants. I tend to do a lot of like filming and editing videos kind of as a hobby. Like it does bring in a little bit of income, but it's not like my job. It's not my full-time job. I have a separate job, but I do still consider it like my free time when I engage in YouTube stuff. So that's where a lot of my time goes. Spending time with family would be another thing I guess that I could fit under also like family and friends. And obviously I have my own two kids, my husband. So we try to spend time together, obviously uh, just doing fun things. Um, other hobbies that I have would include like reading, writing, and any sort of art, drawing, that sort of thing. So like, I like to do those things when I get the chance, but I don't always. I also like playing video games sometimes, and that's actually something my husband and I will do together sometimes after the kids are in bed. Is that something that we have in common? Or obviously, 
watching YouTube, watching TV shows is another. I tend to do that while I'm like folding laundry or doing dishes. So I guess it's not exactly free time, but like it's something I like. Other things, I do some volunteering, especially with my church. I'm on the worship team. So I'll sing on the worship team usually. I love to sing. And actually if I could get involved in like community theater and do musicals again, like I was a thespian in high school, I would absolutely love that, but I just don't have the time right now to do that. Other volunteer things would include just like, yeah, my church does a lot of service projects and stuff. So just kind of being involved in the community and helping out there kind of wherever I can. I think those are the main things that covers it. I mean, hanging out with people, my hobbies, and volunteering are most of <laughs> my free time. But okay, that's my monster sold Pagana. And I feel like I need to pick up the pace because I'm not doing very well with the whole multitasking thing. All right, the next thing I wanna do is actually kind of a fun experiment. I want to try growing plants in no drainage. So I'm gonna kind of clear out some of these plants that I already have. I don't think I'm gonna put a ton of plants in no drainage today just because I'd rather Test it out with a few first, but we'll see. I might get carried away. I don't need, I don't know. I just got these from the thrift store, these glass vessels. And this is my Anthurium Magnificum. And I, I don't want to grow every plant in no drainage, but I want to grow plants in no drainage that are like Anthurium and Alocasia specifically. Maybe something like ferns I would definitely try as well. Just because I found that those plants are thirstier and a lot of people that like Anthurium and grow anthurium and like have a ton of anthurium, kind of swear by growing their anthurium and no drainage. So I wanna to listen to those experiences and experiment with it myself. I'm a person that has like a fairly open mind. So if something's working for another person, I'm fairly willing to try it just to try it and have fun with it, experiment. I know like no drainage is sometimes like a big no-no with people, but I think that there's a way to do it. And again, I just wanna try it. So this is my anthurium magnificum. And I think this is the only anthurium I'm going to be potting up today. Oh, look at these roots. Oh, that's beautiful. What are your YouTube dreams? Go full time on YouTube or is this a casual side hustle? Honestly, I really, really love my job and my current job. I work part time doing graphic design for an organization and I have a lot of flexibility with that job. I really love the people that I work with. And so I don't really see myself like leaving that job. I don't really see myself having enough time to really treat YouTube as a super full-time thing. In my mind, I guess it would be categorized as more of a side hustle. I don't know, going full-time on YouTube is such an interesting way of putting it because I, I already kind of treat YouTube as that's interesting. I, I do kind of already treat it like it's a part-time job. I don't know, my life is, I don't work a strict nine to five. Like I already, I have a part-time job where I'm mostly working from home. I'm also mostly pretty much a stay-at-home mom. Like my mother-in-law watches my kids twice a week, but that's about it. Like the rest of it, I'm just trying to squeeze in hours where I can. And I also <laughs> spend a lot of time on YouTube where I'll release anywhere between five and like, eight videos in a month typically, which like if you look at full-time YouTubers, that's often what they do. So I don't know, in my mind, I'm already kind of, now I know what you mean by full-time is like rely on that as my income. But again, like my income is already pretty much supplementary. So like, we're not relying on my income necessarily to pay the bills most of the time. It's to like help us save money and to help us like actually have discretionary funds. So like my role is already kind of different uh, in that respect. So I know full time would like enable me to quit my job, but basically what I'm trying to say is I don't really have intentions of quitting my day job because I love it so much. Now, would that make my life easier um yeah probably like it would be nice to like only rely on my youtube income and at a certain point i mean i just i mostly see youtube as like a hobby slash high side hustle that i like really really love and enjoy but i also if at any point it brings me a ton of stress like that's kind of 
the area in my life that I'm like, okay, I have to not prioritize this as much. I, I'd say I mostly view it as a side hustle, but if anything, I also just view it as a hobby that I happen to enjoy and can monetize a little bit. Yeah, do I really fully intend to like go full time, go big on YouTube? I don't know. I mean, if I get more successful, so to speak, in terms of more subscribers and more consistent views and stuff like that. I mean, I think that would make me happy, but that's not what I'm like chasing after, if that makes sense. And I and I am pretty perfectionistic, so it's like anything that I do, I really wanna do my best. In a sense, I, I almost find it to be like a game where it's like I'm competing with myself to like get more views and like put out more content and higher quality content and constantly improve, but it's not really to the end of anything. Hey, I just really <laughs> genuinely enjoy this and uh, want to do it. And I hope that answers your question. I feel like I was all over the place. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of verbal processing today, apparently. Did I even show this to you? Yeah, so there's Lekka on the bottom, and then I have an aeroid mix for the rest of the vessel. And the diameter is pretty much the same as it was before in terms of the plant. Like, I don't feel like it would have needed to be up-potted, but I did want to change the substrate and experiment with this. So yeah, and there's just like a little bit more. I mean, obviously the depth is more, but the bottom here is kind of where the water, what reservoir or whatever is. I am not, I am not an expert, you guys. I'm doing my best. Okay, my alocasia cupria is just not looking so hot. It started dropping another leaf. So I'm like, okay, we need to address this. There's clearly something going on. There is a new growth point, which is positive. I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm gonna clip off this leaf and then I wanna investigate the root system and then try a no drainage because I just, I wanna be able to see the roots on this plant and I'm just willing to take a risk and try something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the roots are just toast, but there are some corns. Oh, that's okay, that's good. Okay, so these roots are looking bad, like definitely root rot issues. Um, in which case, I don't know, should I try rerooting it and no drainage? Do people do that? Or should I just go my normal root and try moss? I don't know, but there is a corn, so that's fun. But yeah, these roots are really just falling off. So uh, yeah, I have had root rot with this plant before, like in the past, and I was able to re-root it. But yeah, I'm just, most of these roots are toast. There's just a handful that are okay. But I mean, I'll just re-root it, it's no big deal. Like it's a bummer, but I'm pretty confident this plant will live. Okay, where'd the corn go? I do want to address the corn first, so let me get a little vessel for it. Very occasionally, my husband and I like to indulge in like the wee yogurts, and these glass containers that they come in are so perfect for <laughs> alocasia corms, I feel like. So that's what I'm gonna use. Where'd it go? There it is. <laughs> but this is what it looks like. I just like gently peel away at it. I've only done this a handful of times. So I never really know like what the best course of action is, but I've seen people like peel them. I've seen, I've seen people not peel them, but I just try to take off a bunch of the stuff. And I just pop it in there. And I will cover this in like saran wrap or something and water it in a little bit more and put it in a prop box. <laughs> but first, let me find my next question. Any idea why a healthy snake plant would just die at two years old? Oh man, I mean, that's tough. I mean, if it, that would just make me question like how confident were you that it was really healthy because snake plants are tricky. They're they're very easy until they're not. And I say that because I feel like snake, like some plants are so clear with their symptoms of unhealth, you know that that plant is not doing well. They're dropping leaves, they're drooping, they're being dramatic. But snake plants, I, I feel like they're kind of similar to cactus where, for example, my husband had a cactus when he was in college. He kept on watering it all year and he didn't realize that it was literally dead. It had died like two months into him having it, but it still like kind of looked alive. And so he just kept on watering it. That's how I feel like snake plants can be sometimes. Like on the surface, they can look like they're totally fine. But then, I mean, in reality, they're just not. So that would be my suspicion is like, maybe at one point it was consistently not getting enough water or it got too 
too much water consistently and either like rotted. Again, I don't have like a ton of experience with snake plants, but I have seen some where they, I mean, it kind of depends on how it died. Like how, how did it look when it died? Like, did it like flop over? Did it rot like just at the base? Because that would indicate, hey, maybe the soil that it was in was not great and it like retained too much water. And so it just rotted at the base of the plant or did it like just completely dry and shrivel up or like croak over? And I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of hard to answer that question as there are so many possibilities. Like, I don't know what conditions the snake plant was in. Like, was it in a room with zero light for months on end? Or, you know, did it have good light or, yeah. <laughs> Does that, does that make sense? Or like, did you fertilize it too much in one sitting with like a new fertilizer? I, I don't know. Those are all just theories. But again, like not knowing your conditions and like how you cared for your plant, it's a little bit hard to say, but those are just guesses of mine that like maybe it wasn't actually healthy, but it's really hard to tell whether or not a snake plant is healthy. Does that make sense? But yeah, if it was healthy and it just like croaked overnight, I mean, it could also have been a pest. I haven't seen snake plants with a lot of pests. I don't know. I feel like thrips can do a ton of damage to a plant overnight. So I'd like be looking out for a pest or maybe you fertilized it or like watered it one too many times. I feel like those would be the most common issues, especially if it, if it was healthy. Those could cause some immediate problems. We'll see how this does. <laughs> I was thinking that I would pot into here with no drainage, but oh well, that's fine. The next question is another more personal one and it's how many more kids do you see in your future? And that's something that my husband and I have been talking about and trying to figure out. Honestly, I don't know. I could see myself being done with kids with just two, but I could also see myself having one more of my own child, like one more biological child, or I could also see us fostering or adopting. But no matter the route, I don't think I would have more than three kids at this point. I just, you know, I think that my husband and I are on the fence about a third. I don't really see myself having another one after that. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I hang on, let me find a new plant to pot up before I get into this. I'll pot up this Shangri-La Pothos maybe in here. So both of my pregnancies were really hard and both my deliveries were also really hard because I had HG or hyperemesis gravidarum, which basically means my morning sickness was horrible and nonstop and for a lot of the pregnancy. And I also had preeclampsia with both kids, um, which if you don't know about that, like that basically just means I had like unexplained, extremely high blood pressure spikes when I normally have like pretty normal blood pressure, but that also like led to a ton of anxiety surrounding my blood pressure being taken. That's actually part of another reason I don't know if I want more kids is like, I don't know if I wanna go into all those doctor's appointments again. and. I don't know. The thing that makes me on the fence, even though both my pregnancies were like really, really hard and my deliveries were really hard, is that like I do love kids and like, yes, they're expensive and it is exhausting to have a baby. But I mean, when I think about my family in the future, like this is the one thing that gives me pause. I don't know if I feel like my family is complete yet per se, like I could see us, you know, when our kids are grown and outside of the house and like having their own kids and like coming over for holidays and all that sort of thing. I mean. Lord willing, we have really good relationships with our kids into adulthood. I mean, I want to have a really healthy relationship with my kids. And I, when I think about the future in that way, like down the line, it's like, okay, could I see myself? It's not that I'm not content with my children. Like that's not at all. Like I could see myself having these two kids and that's it. But what I'm used to personally is like, I'm used to bigger families because I'm the youngest of seven children. I'm just used to like large and boisterous family gatherings. When I think about family, what I envision is like a big family. But then again, I don't know if I have the capacity to like bring it in that much more responsibility. Obviously child rearing is one of those things that we want to do really, really well. We want to do really, really well. You know, the more kids that you have, Sometimes you're a little bit more spread thin and not to say that you can't do a good job when you have more kids Like that's absolutely not what I'm saying But like knowing myself and my own capacity for like stimulation and <laughs> Busyness and that sort of thing. I just I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I get Overwhelmed kind of easily other times. I feel like I'm really high capacity But other times I feel like I get really overwhelmed. So I don't know what that's about but because of that overwhelm like 
you know, I feel like I might need to draw a line at two kids. But then again, yeah, when I think about the future, I'm like, but do I want to only have two kids? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's the story there. And this is a Shangri-La Pothos. Oh, it's so cute. I love that. All right, I'm kind of slowly running out of time, so I can probably only do a few more plants and a few more questions. Okay, this Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye right here is like suffering. I don't know what the problem is, but see how crispy it is? and it's curling and I just like didn't catch it in time. And it's, I, I'm just so confused, but maybe something happened that I didn't like. So I'm gonna check on the roots on this. And then long-term I have this specimen that's really gorgeous <laughs> and much healthier. I might, I might consider potting them together just to make a fuller plant, especially since this one is looking so scraggly. So yeah, we're gonna dive into this guy and see what's going on. Okay. Yeah, it looks like these roots dry rotted. So that's really unfortunate. Yeah, I just, I think I underwatered this plant one too many times or like maybe once I had too much of a space between waterings, which is not surprising because I've had some periods of time where I've been really busy and Begonias are not super forgiving of underwatering, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm gonna cut off all these roots and reroot this plant. That's sad, but maybe this will be my new main plant. Um, but look, look at how toast those roots are. Oh, that is really a bummer, but I just, I mean, I'm not perfect. So I just messed up. <laughs> Water this, I'm just gonna like chop it here because really these plants can root from anywhere. Not a big deal. I'll just, again, I'm just gonna reroot this plant. What's your favorite plant find this year? Or plant finds, cause it's probably too hard to pick just one. I have to like remember like what plants I even got this year, to be honest. That's really hard to answer. I would say just off the top of my head. Cause like, I don't know for sure if I would like commit to this answer. If I like were to review all of my plants that I've gotten this year, just off the top of my head, I have really enjoyed my different like anthurium purchases, but especially the purchase I did from Carnivoro. I can like link these in the cards, whichever side it's on. I, I can never remember. The plants I got from Carnivoro were two anthuriums. One of them was the anthurium dark forgetii and one of them was the Anthurium Dark Crystalline and Cross with Anthurium Papillinumum. So those ones I have really, really loved a lot. Other plants that I've gotten that I can remember, honestly, like my entire haul from the greenhouse that I toured, immaculate. Like I'm, I might pot up a couple of them right now with like my last bit of time. <laughs> this Philodendron Ring of Fire, for instance, so gorgeous. Alocasia Frydeck incredible i've really really loved those plants so yeah i'd say those are some of my favorites off the top of my head but honestly like i really have enjoyed most of the plants that i've like bought this year and of course there are several plants i've like traded and stuff that were also fantastic let me find a vessel of some kind okay i need to make more moss so let me do that. I'm gonna just put them in here. Oh, also some of you guys were wondering what kind of moss I use. And it's this kind. I just get it off of Amazon. I don't know if it's like the best moss. I feel like it's a little bit more expensive than some other moss that's out there, but I like it a lot. So I'm willing to pay the extra a little bit because it's a really nice quality. So yeah, that's the answer to your question. It's that one. And I think it's like called New Zealand moss or something. Again, I can't really speak to like the sustainability. I think that they claim to be pretty sustainable because they like have their own farms that they harvest from or something, I guess. But honestly, there's so much greenwashing at this point. I kind of take everything with a grain of salt. If you could have any one of your wishlist plants traded for any plant in your collection, which one would you trade and for which wishlist plant? Honestly, right now I've really been wanting a Hoya undulata and they're pretty expensive. Like they're usually around $100 for like one or two leaves. So I would say I would definitely go for a Hoya undulata. 
that's one I'd really, really like to have. Um, and for which plant? I mean, if I could do like any sort of trade, like if someone wanted like a pothos or like, I mean, any one of the many propagations I have of some of these plants. I've got lots of propagations of Begonia maculata whitey I usually have. I mean, I would want to make it like a fair trade, but like, if it could be any plant, I would just like trade any sort of plant that I was on the fence about in my collection, which I've made some videos about that on the, in the past. And I have gotten rid of a lot of those plants already that I was on the fence about, but like, for example, my Peperomia verticula, I feel like that one is, it might be my least favorite plant in my collection. Um, yeah, it's this one. So it's like, if someone would want to trade this for a Hoya Angelata, like I wouldn't stop you. I'd be like, are you sure about that? But like, but like if we're being actually serious and like I actually was trying to trade with someone, I would see if my Alocasia Friday had any corms and then, and I would try to mature those corms into like a little baby Alocasia Friday plant. I would also consider like chopping some of my philodendron or something like that, like the Autobot Poent and the Florida Ghost. And you know, those are plants that I have multiples of. Yeah, the Adabapuense is another one that I've chopped up and I have multiples of. Um, I would be willing to propagate most of my plants to get that plant if someone was interested in trading with me and wanted a piece of one of my plants. Now, if we're talking like an entire plant and not just a propagation, I don't really know which plants of high value to me that I really, really love. I would be willing to trade. Like I'd, I'd sooner just propagate several plants um, and trade those propagations than, you know, trade in an entire whole plant, you know? Hopefully that reroots. That's a little bit sad, but I, it's gonna be fine, I think. I definitely underwatered that plant and they're not very forgiving when you underwater them. Do you recommend any fertilizer in particular or have any that didn't work well? What boosts do you like to feed your plants? So I, if I'm being honest, I haven't done a lot of fertilizer shopping, like at all. I pretty much have used only a handful of fertilizers and I don't think that any of them didn't work well. I have a tendency to under fertilize rather than over fertilize, which is probably for the best because if you over fertilize, oh my gosh, look at these roots. Yeah, if you over fertilize, that can be, you know, more dangerous for your plants in an immediate sense because they can get fertilizer burn. But if you under fertilize, you know, that might just suffer over time from not getting enough nutrients um, or just not grow as quickly. So I would say I've never really had any like major adverse issues, but I also don't use liquid plant fertilizer. The only fertilizers that I've really used have been the Tanks Green Stuff organic fertilizer, which is just like a powder that you mix into your soil. And I've also used Osmocote Slow Release, and that was what I used very early on in my plant journey. Like that was the first fertilizer that I ever used because my mom suggested it. And I just went with that and it was fine, but I wanted to explore other options. So that's when I started using Tanks Green Stuff organic fertilizer because I was afraid of fertilizer burn. And I liked the idea of just replenishing the natural nutrients within the soil. So that's what I started using after Osmocote and I still use it to this day. Um, as far as other boosts in like plant food go, I occasionally water with Bonide plant food. Although that bottle is almost done and I wanna try the Arbor plant food just for fun. Number one, because it was on a sale during Black Friday. So I just picked it up. So I was like, why not? I've been wanting to try this. And number two, because I'm just a sucker for cute packaging. That's all I can really say. Like if you've got a cute product, I'm very tempted to use it. <laughs> I don't know what the quality of that is gonna be. I just ordered it and I haven't received it yet. That's an idea. I also sometimes spray with orchid mist, like on my Hoya in particular, like not even really orchids per se. And I don't know if they, if it's made a big difference or not, honestly. But yeah, that is one thing I actually do wanna be more intentional about this year. It's one of my goals is I wanna get better at fertilizing more consistently. And I totally zoned out and like added all the soil without the plant. So I'm gonna start that over. <laughs> Whoopsie. Oh my goodness. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I do want to like get more intentional with, oh, is this gonna be a big enough pot? Hmm. It's not a very deep pot, but I don't know if I have any like deeper ones. 
I might just like start it like this. The tough part is like accommodating the moss pole with this root system. Oh, by the way, this is a philodendron ring of fire. I don't think I said that. But yeah, I would say that that's one of my goals in the new year is just that I get more intentional and like better at feeding my plants and get, getting them the, the nutrients that they need, that sort of thing. Okay, I feel like this is a bit of a tight squeeze for this plant and I'm gonna have to repot it soon. Honestly, like looking at the way that it is, but that's fine. <laughs> Okay, I'm very tempted to like start answering another question while I'm potting up this last plant, but I I don't wanna like get too into anything because I don't want to like not have enough time to answer the question. So I'm just gonna wrap up with potting up this philodendron ring of fire. I hope that you guys enjoy Q and A's because like I know for some people it's like, oh, I'm only here for the plants, but with me personally, I love when YouTubers do Q&As because I love kind of getting to know the YouTuber and I don't know, I think there's something fun to it and it's kind of fun to, to share a bit of myself, my story and my experiences. So let me know if you enjoy Q&As or if you don't like them, if you skip them, I mean, that's fine too. I guess if you normally skip them, you wouldn't be watching this video, would you? I know some people don't put like ring of fires or like philodendron narrows on poles, but I really like the way that it looks. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> it's just so nice and clean. But I'm gonna wind up with so many moss poles, you guys, because I've been like putting so many plants on poles recently, but I've finally found a system that I like. And I think that's, that's why I'm doing it. But it also means I've been talking about this recently. I need to make a new space <laughs> specifically for my moss poles that like will be good for them out of reach of my children that sort of thing just because like moss poles are such a very specific way to grow a plant because you know it's a lot of vertical space and if you have a lot of floor space that's one thing but i don't really uh mostly because i have children and i don't want them to get into plants so i don't really keep very many plants on the ground This is what I've got. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. That's beautiful. Now to clean up. always have more plants that I want to repot in a single sitting but I will say I think that we accomplished a fair amount here now that I like see all the plants together we did a good job and I answered some questions and yeah that was actually really really fun so thank you so much for watching this video I hope that you enjoyed it and if you did please feel free to leave a like comment subscribe all those things are super helpful for my channel so yeah I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day bye bye